What's the hoopla everyone? It's the war winning commentator and welcome back to part 3 on our journey. If you guys missed part 2 and part 1, click somewhere in the top left portion of your screen will take you back to the video that you missed. Now Journey is a PS3 exclusive game that costs $15. The concept for the game is a very simple one. You are a young rogue figure alone in the middle of a desert and you have to go across different landscapes to reach the summit of this mountain. In the last video, part 2, I ended off that video by asking you guys, what is your purpose in life? What are you guys living for? Because in this world, as a young rogue figure, you have to figure out why are you here? Why are you the last person in the civilization? Are you here to rebuild the civilization? What happened to the civilization? But again, that will be answered as we continue on this journey. Now are you living for yourself? Are you living to glorify yourself? The whole world revolves around you, waiting on you hand and foot. That you don't have to work hard and that handouts will be given to you. Or are you living to help other people? To help other people grow from the ideals and the morals that you have learned as become wiser and older and to place them on someone else. And place them on a protege, so to say. And I want to challenge you, if you guys are the first person where you think everyone's just going to give you handouts, you don't have to work hard in life and that you can just goof off all the time. Then you have to wake up. Yes, there are some people that can do that, but there's some people that cannot do that. And a perfect example is going to college. You see all these people first getting an accomplishment of going to college because graduating high school is a thing in its own. But when you get to college, college is 10 times harder than high school. And you see all these people just slowly slacking off and thinking, I'm on my own. I can do whatever I want because they did not have a good ideal system. A good morals placed on them at a young early age when they are growing up in the middle school, high school age. They are now struggling in college. They are having identity issues and they are trying to figure out themselves. But in this world, we all struggle for identity. That's something that most people struggle with in middle school. For girls, it's a very hard thing because everyone is always being compared to themselves. Society tells them that they need to look like this, need to be at zero or less than a zero, a minus two or something. And again, as a guy, I mean, guys struggle with this ideal of we don't want to share our emotions, we don't want to share our feelings. And for me in middle school, it was always about sports. Sports was my way to connect to other people. I played baseball in an early age. I played soccer in an early age. I played Taekwondo. I did almost any sport you could think of, I did. And that was my identity issue. And in middle school, you have to figure out what do you want to be. And a lot of people struggle with that. That's why when you get to high school, this thing, this thing that people offer to you, tell you, hey, you're having a bad day. You're having something that cannot get you over the edge. Just take this pill. Snort this thing. It will help you get to it. And all of a sudden, you start getting addicted to it. You start taking that one puff. You think something that, hey, it's okay, man. It's acceptable. All these celebrities I look up to are doing it. It's not going to happen to me. Next thing you know, you're on the bottom. You're a rock bottom. Doing the exact same thing. Doing it daily. And then the very next thing you know, the flashing blues come after you. Reality kicks in. You are behind bars. Something when people tell you when you're in middle school that someone comes by and says, all right, hey, don't do drugs. Don't do alcohol. It's, it's you know, alcohol is good in moderation, but again, you have to be a certain age to do it. You're like, yeah, that's never going to happen to me. I'm going to take one sip. And the next thing you know, you have a mugshot that everyone will see. Now, I'm speaking not from experience, but just watching people that I've grew up with. As a 20-year-old kid right now, watching my friends, people that had their life all in front of them. Just go down that road. Do that one stupid mistake that, again, it's just one simple mistake, but yet they did it. And now, the whole world, it's not screwed up, but it's going to be very hard to get back on top of things, to get back to a job. So I want to challenge you again, what are you living for? Are you living for yourself? Do you even have a purpose in life? Do you even want to be here in life? And if that's the case, I want to encourage you guys to speak to someone. Because it's a very serious issue if you do not want to live anymore. And yes, I know we talk about some very deep things, but that's something you learn about this journey. You learn about, it's not about you along this journey, even though you're playing this video game by yourself. It just puts your whole life into perspective and think about the people that have touched you along the way and how they have placed ideals and morals and how you can pass it on to the next generation. I understand there's some very heavy parts in part three, but in part four, we're almost out of the desert. We're done searching the desert to figure out what has happened to this fallen world. We start surfing on sand. But on this journey, you realize it's not just you going on this journey. 
It's about anyone that's touched you in your life and anyone that you have touched with your life. Because every day someone is watching you. Someone is watching hoping that you secretly screw up. Look at the media. Look at any athlete right now. Everyone is hoping, oh my gosh, I hope this guy screws up so I can get this amazing breaking story. People wanted Tim Tebow to screw up because he was something that was unheard of. He was breaking the status quo of athletes. Or look at Michael Vick. Michael Vick was a quarterback that's breaking what a quarterback looked like. Instead of being the typical 6'6", long arm, deep throwing quarterback, he was a mobile quarterback that was doing it with his legs. And then he screws up. Or look at Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods was the number one golfer and people were praying and hoping that someone else would challenge him besides Phil. And when that finally happened, people thought golf was done. Instead of just watching these young guys actually competing it out, doing really well. What they wish and hope for actually happened and now they don't want it to happen. That's something we'll dive into in the next episode. Thank you guys for watching. Hope all is well.